Okay, so time, time and space. When I was a kid, I discovered a lot of things when I was actual projecting. So, so many things. And over on Periscope, somebody asked me to mention the things that I figured out, the things that I wrote down in a notepad and I destroyed later on in life through paranoia. Yeah, for good reason. The things that I was figuring out, most people have a hard time to believe in 3D because it doesn't quite match up with their beliefs. What I was figuring out was completely different. What I was figuring out is how reality actually was through these dimensions, these layers of time and space. So I'm going to try and tell you guys exactly how it was that I saw it. Now imagine a flipbook, okay, and in this flipbook you're seeing frame per frame per frame, frames per second, points of space that are moving, and because your consciousness is able to notice each frame per second, it's given the illusion of motion. And during this illusion of motion, it's giving you a sense of time. Okay, now this is how it is. This is how I figured it out throughout the astral dimensional realms of existence. I was able to notice these frames per second, but not just in the flipbook, but in 3D reality. Okay, look at it like this. Another example. This frame right here, and this frame right here, these are from a projector, a very old projector my family used to have. And what it is, is each frame per second is a real, very real experience within 3D that is captured on this little, little tiny square. And a light goes through this film image and it projects an image and it moves up so fast that it gives the illusion of motion through the projection on the wall. So that, again, very much like the flip book, it's given the illusion of motion. And depending on how how focused your attention is will depend on the speed relative to the time reference, how, how fast it looks like it's going. Let's make more sense of this. This is what I discovered, okay. Each dimension in 3D, parallel dimensions, are literally existing all at the same time and your consciousness can only perceive or notice or become aware of one frame per second, one instant in time, the present moment, constantly over and over and over again. So it's giving the illusion of motion because you're only able to see one frame per second, one dimension at a time. You're constantly traveling through parallel dimensions all of the time and you don't even notice it. I only noticed this when I astral projected and I saw myself doing it for the first time. It was like seeing multiple versions of myself in front and multiple at the back, but time doesn't move in one straight line. What some may believe is quite natural when it comes to movement through time and space, left and right, up or down, or sideways. Just how you would walk in 3D, right and left, or jump up and down, when you're traveling through different parallel dimensions, it is not the same. The concept or the behavior of motion does not behave the same when it comes to you navigating throughout time and space. For example, you could walk in front of you, in the street, and like I said before, frames per frames per frames per second, given the illusion of motion and time. But really, when you scale out and you look at all the frames per second, you look at all of the camera film of space in front of you, all these parallel dimensions, what's actually happening is you're moving like this. You're moving all over the place. You're not moving in a straight line, even though this in it could be perceived as if you're moving in a straight line because the road in front of you that is straight looks like you're moving down the straight road. But when you get outside of this reality, when you get outside of this dimensional frame and you see all of the other dimensions, what's actually happening is you're moving randomly. Now, just say for example, if you was actually moving in a straight line in time and space, what could actually happen? What it would look like is you're here one second and then you're somewhere else the next second and then somewhere else the next second and again and again and again. and. On an outside perspective, when you're looking at all the frames per second, when you're looking at it like that, it looks like the consciousness is moving in a straight line. But really, when you scale into the dimensional frames, you're actually moving and jumping through different dimensions, different points of space. So this is how motion 
on the outside of the parallel universes exist. Now, parallel dimensions, a lot of people say that they've got to be drastically different. Something completely different. Nothing small, but huge. This deals with how different the consciousness is within the person who's experiencing their 3D experience. How different of a vibration their thinking patterns are, which then puts their character into a different place of space. For example, there could be a parallel you that already exists right now that's a billionaire, that has all of the money in the world, and who knows, probably is a magician. Their mindset, what they know, how they view the world is different. And it's that mindset that is allowing them to exist within a different point of space. So you have to drastically change your mindset in order to drastically change your whereabouts within these dimensions. Now here's where it gets really cool. If you scale down to the size of an atom, like really small, a lot of people would say, but you're seeing the atoms move. Again, you can only see one frame per second. You're just scaling it down to a really small, minute size. But if you get really small, something strange happens. The atom disappears, and then it reappears. On the smallest of macro scale, you're seeing this happen. What you're actually seeing is you're seeing the edge of the frame. You're seeing that little gap in between the pictures. Okay. And that is what you're viewing, or you're catching yourself, noticing the shift in the dimensions. So everyone's doing it all the time. But who knows? Maybe one day science will catch up and finally realize what it is that me and other people who astral project are actually seeing. So you end up quantum jumping all the time, jumping through different parallel dimensions and you're not even aware of it because you do it so fast. So you have to kind of slow down time and space in order to figure this out. Now, funny thing, people can actually do this by the way. I ended up doing this in 2012 when I noticed time slowing down and time speeding up based upon how many frames per second points of space you're paying attention to. Ever had a boring day at work, right? A very, very, very boring day at work. And because you want it to end so quickly, you're paying attention to everything. Like, oh, why can't this happen faster? The checkouts, the tills, everything. Why can't it just be quicker? Because you're paying attention to the spaces, the frames per second in front of you, Time slows down because you're noticing more frames per second. You're getting more information from the dimensional spaces in front of you. So time slows down and you start to notice more information. But if you miss the frames per second, very much like flipping through a flipbook and not looking at it, right? And or flipping it really fast because you're missing it, not even looking at the frames per second. What happens is time speeds up. And it's an ability most people will have achieved deliberately like myself where you can slow down your perception of time or speed it up to make a day go faster or slower if you want to experience something really slow for hours on end when really just 20 minutes has gone past or you want to experience work really quickly because you want to finish that day as soon as possible right but until then i'm ron jc i'll speak to you guys pretty soon